So I'm here with Palmer Lucky of Oculus, and tell me, how has these last few months been since sort of the, uh, the final build of the Oculus been? So everything's going really well. Uh, we're going to be launching the Rift at, at the end of March. Uh, we launched Gear VR together with Samsung on Black Friday just a few months ago. So uh, we're having a really good time. We're finalizing all of our content, finalizing all our hardware, getting ready to ship all of this stuff. This is great, and I just experienced uh, Minecraft with Oculus, with, with the Rift, and I gotta say it was really great, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad you thought so. The, the, the Minecraft team has done a lot of work to make it into a good VR experience. On the performance side, UI side, it, it, they've done a really good job of making it feel like it's a real made-for VR application. Yeah, and uh, now we're here at a Microsoft event. Is there anything you could say about things coming up with Microsoft? It seems like Oculus is, really likes Microsoft. So we've talked a lot about them a lot in the past. Uh, like we're bundling an Xbox One gamepad with the Rift. Uh, we've announced that Minecraft is going to be on Gear VR and on Rift. Uh, we've shown off Xbox One streaming. We're able to stream Xbox One games into a virtual theater. Um, I can't talk about anything that we're going to be announcing in the future. It's better if you talk to Microsoft. No problem. But hey, there, it sounds like there might be something in the future, which is really we're gonna exciting. Keep, we're going to keep working together. What do you see the future of VR heading? I mean, the, the future of VR in the long run is to have virtual reality technology that can present virtual worlds that are indistinguishable or close to indistinguishable from the real world. Once we can do that, VR isn't a technology that really can possibly fail. I mean, it's, it's something that is applicable to everybody, not just gamers, not just hardcore gamers. That's something that anybody can use. What, what hurdles do you see that we need to accomplish before we can sort of get to that indistinguishable factor? So there's a lot of optics challenges, display challenges, sensor challenges, but one of the biggest challenges is going to be rendering horsepower. I mean, it's the same thing that's always been the limiting factor in the games industry. It's how many flops do we have to push these graphics? And obviously, we're not at the point right now where we have consumer viable devices that can push photorealistic graphics of every possible scenario, but we're getting close. We're getting, we're getting pretty close. Where do you, do you look at the competition ever? Of course. <laughs> any any opinions? I mean... I'm obviously biased. I think we have the best hardware. I think we have the best software. I think we have the best developers. I mean, I just, I just mostly, you know, I'm obviously really proud of what we've built, but it's good to see other people in the space because it really shows that VR is something that everybody believes in. You know, it's not just me and my company believing it. If it that would actually be kind of scary if we were the only company that believed in VR. But because there's all this competition, it kind of justifies. It's like, hey, lots of companies out there, from teeny tiny companies all the way up to multi-hundred billion dollar corporations, they all try VR and they see that it's an important thing and they start, you know, they've jumped into the industry. And when, you, I mean, it seems like such a crazy ride from when you started, it almost felt like everyone was saying this this couldn't exist, this couldn't happen. What is the biggest change that you've seen since that initial Kickstarter to where now we finally have the Rift? The biggest change has been kind of acceptance. Like as people try it, like when people try VR, they understand it and they believe in it. Uh, this, that's, that's a lot different from VR in the 80s and the 90s. Back then, VR was hyped up as this future technology that was going to change everything. but. The people who tried VR back then were actually the ones who were least excited about it because they saw the limitations. They realized how far away it really was. Now it's the opposite. People who try the Rift almost always come away believing that even if they don't want to buy a Rift right now, they understand VR and they understand that they are going to want to use it at some point. What do you think the next step is to, you know, we have the product. What do you think the next step is for acceptance? To get that person who thinks, yeah, this is, I see that this experience is it. Now, what do you think they need to do to actually buy one and use it all the time? Three big things. One, a broader content library. We already have a lot of stuff to play, but there is a huge content lineup that's going to be coming out, not just at launch, but over the next year and the year after that. And that's really important because there needs to be new stuff coming out. You need to be broadening that audience of, you know, broadening the audience by making things that everybody wants to do. Not just gamers, not just hardcore gamers, but also having more genres of games come out. The two other things you need to do are drive up the quality, drive down the cost. If you had a virtual reality headset that cost $100 that was as good as real life, I don't think there's a person in the world who wouldn't be at least a little bit interested in that. That's great. Thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you. Thank the you the future is bright. Thank you yes. so much.